Welcome to K9 Revolution Radio. Presented by K9 Revolution Dog Training, enhancing the dog and owner relationship through education, balance, and pack instinct. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of K9 Revolution Radio. I've got Chad and Kevin here. What's up? Samantha's sleeping in the back over there. <laughs> <laughs> Call her out. <laughs> so uh, today we're going to talk about insecurity. So we've, uh, we've already done an episode on anxiety. So now we're going to talk about uh, insecurity in dogs. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, what it is, what causes it, what the signs of it are, how we can, how we can recognize it in our dog some of the uh the problem behaviors that we that we come in contact with um as a, as a cause of insecurity and then we're going to talk about um how to treat insecurity right so most of the problem behaviors that we see are rooted in either anxiety or insecurity like i said we've already talked about anxiety focuses on insecurity here today so when we're when we're talking about insecurity when relating to dogs we're talking about a dog's lack of self self-confidence or just general fear-based behaviors, okay? So most everybody understands, um, you know, the concept of uh, the fight and the flight response, right? Our dog hears a loud noise or, or they're con- confronted with something that they perceive as a threat and they run and, and cower underneath something, right? Typical flight response, right? So this is, this is an obvious and easy, easily recognizable sign of insecurity, right? So dogs can also choose to fight instead of flee. Okay, so most people don't understand and recognize that that as well can be, and, and most of the time is, rooted in insecurity, right? <clears throat> so uh, first, we're going to talk about where does this come from? Where does, where does insecurity come from? All right, so we get, that at, we get asked that all the time. Why does my dog have insecurity? Why are they fearful? Um, and really, I mean, there's a huge list of why it could be. Um, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We, we, we're talking about how do, we, how do we move forward and treat it, right? But... There's a number of reasons that can cause insecurity to be present in our dogs. So for one, it can be genetic, right? So all mammals, uh, including ourselves, humans, right, come with a natural instinctive response to fear. This is a survival mechanism, right? We, We feel fear or recognize fear and we react to it, okay? This instinct can be exaggerated in some. So you might see uh, this same thing in people, but you see this, some dogs are, have an exaggerated fear response, right? <clears throat> it can be cu- it can it can come from the parents right so let's say let's take a puppy's mother for example let's say she's a high has high levels of insecurity right so she's under high levels of stress all the time so um when she's pregnant she's under those high levels of stress right natural i mean uh that's gonna clearly have an effect on everything that's going on with the puppies inside of her while she's stressed out that's that's not very healthy for them but also uh, typically, like, you know, you go to a breeder for a puppy, they're going to be there for about eight weeks. So during that eight weeks, they're, they're experiencing an insecure mother and some of those behaviors. So they're, they're picking that up as well, right? So that gets carried on. <clears throat> um, so other things are uh, like improper breeding. Okay, so improper breeding practices or no breeding practices, right? How many times, you know, do we see accidental litters and and people don't really know what they're doing? That can be a a huge thing. So there's a lot of things that that humans have to do uh, during the puppy's critical development stages, right? To make them properly socialized to not only, you know, other dogs, not only people, but environments, noises, different things that's that's going on. And if that is not done, you can have a, a, a puppy develop insecurity right you guys got anything so far well just touching on like the uh like what you're talking about right now the mother you know being stressed during pregnancy that's going to have an effect obviously on the puppies as they're developing inside the mother you know and then whenever those puppies are born like you already said those puppies the first uh, person or thing that's really imprinting on them and teaching them is the mother Mm -hmm. same with uh you know most human babies you know yeah. they're really attached to their mother and so if their mother has certain uh characteristic traits or personality traits that baby or that puppy you know is going to pick up on that and perform those traits usually as well you know what i'm saying so um nothing wrong with that you know it just is what it is but 
you know, if you're out there looking for a puppy and you're checking out breeders, that can be an indicator. What we're talking about today, you can go to a breeder, you can observe the parents, mm -hmm. you specifically observe the mother. And as we go through this discussion today, you know, Chris is going to be pointing out some things that you can look for uh, to be able to identify insecurity. You know what I'm saying? But if you identify that, maybe you don't go with that breeder, you know, because yeah. maybe you want a dog that has a more social mother that they're learning from early in life, you know, stuff like that. So that's extremely important for a lot of people out there looking for puppies. It's not just about the puppy. You got to look at the parents as well. And if you ask a breeder to go look at the parents and they say no, or the parents aren't there, that's a red flag immediately. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So just something for people to think about, you know. Along with that, I mean, just set yourself up for success. We get so lost in, you know, wanting to breed dogs for aesthetics, mm. you know, that we're not even recognizing what's going on. They're force breeding, whatever the case may be. Genetically, the puppies are already at a disadvantage if you have the right combination of parents. Yeah, so sure. another thing to keep in mind as you check out these breeders. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. All right, so <clears throat> we'll talk about some other ways that a dog can develop insecurity, right? And this, so this would be through like traumatic events, right? So. Uh, if at a, uh, let's say we have a dog at a very young age or, or really, I mean, really this can go for any, any, at any point in their life, but they get attacked by another dog, right? And they, they sustain an injury, whatever this can be at the dog park or in the neighborhood or whatever. This can cause the dog to develop an insecurity towards other dogs naturally, right? They were involved in a traumatic experience. So now and the traumatic experience was caused by a dog. I want nothing to do with, with dogs, right? Um, same, I mean, you can, you can plug in anything in that scenario, right? It can be, uh, you know, humans that abuse dogs, you know, they can naturally be insecure towards, towards humans, um, can be traumatized by a sound or, or, you know, uh, you know, a natural disaster, whatever, um, that, that can cause that kind of stuff. You could have a, uh, litter of puppies back to the puppy and the mother thing. You know, we've dealt with a lot of, uh, dogs that they were found on the side of the road, you know, yeah. so you could have a litter of puppies where the mother has a litter. Maybe then the mother gets hit by a car, you know, the mother's out of the picture. Now it's just the puppies mm -hmm. surviving on their own. Yeah. Maybe some of the puppies don't make it, mm -hmm. but maybe a couple do. They get picked up by somebody on the side of the road or a rescue picks them up. Then they end up with somebody, you know, down the, down the, and the, you know, down the road, they, you know, yeah. somebody picks them up, has them as their pet, you know what I'm saying? And now the puppy's bringing all that with them. Again, it's nothing against the puppy, nothing bad, but it's something that we identify yeah to be able to help our dog live the best life possible by helping to treat that and rehabilitate that mindset, you know, but that's another thing that could happen. Yeah. And it's kind of along both things. Like you got the mother's out of the picture, the mother's stressed out during the pregnancy because they're roaming around anyway, you know, and then number three, the mother's out of the picture. Now you got cars going by, you got loud noises. And so the puppy's just having these bad experiences back to back to back to back. They get attacked by some dogs or something out there, you know, back to back to back to back. And now they got this bad, higher extreme level of insecurity you know now they're at somebody's house you know for their forever home thankfully someone was able to provide that to them you know what i'm saying um but they're combating this at the house sure. you know what i'm saying so yeah. another scenario that that could be happening you yeah. know I mean, even just not having their mom around i mean basically they teach them how to be a dog yeah. you know she gets mm -hmm. out of the picture at an early age yeah, yeah. rough time mm -hmm. absolutely all right, so lastly, uh, insecurity can be learned uh, and reinforced by us, right? So uh, our last example of, of trauma, obviously that's a, that's a way that they will learn insecurity, um, but we can continually reinforce insecurity if we're not careful, right? And so we see this a lot. So how we react to our dogs displaying insecurity can be a huge factor, right? So um, if our dog reacts fearfully to thunder, for example, right? What does everybody do? Oh, it's okay. it's going to be okay. They're shaking, right? They're visibly oh, afraid. I hug them when it rains. It yeah. makes them feel better. Yeah, so we pick them up. We say, it's okay. We're trying to comfort them. And that's a human thing, right? This is what we would, would, we would do with our children or maybe, you know, like a baby or something like that to provide that social comfort. We have to remember, we got to get, we got to put ourselves in the, in the dog's mind, right? Um, we are essentially communicating to, the, to our dogs, hey, this is the proper response to what you are uh, what you are feeling, and I want you to continue to do this, you know, uh, the next time you hear a thunderstorm, yeah. right? So this is reinforcing. We want this behavior, we're saying we want this behavior to continue uh, in the future every time you're afraid, right? So this is not going to 
uh, help them overcome, right? And the people do a lot of crazy things that, you know, they say, uh, like, it's okay, it's okay, or maybe they comfort them somewhere. They're like, a thunderstorm's coming, let me give you your anxiety pills. <laughs> your CBD yeah, treats. Yeah. <laughs> or let me get the thunder jacket out, put the thunder jacket on. You know what I'm saying? So. People do a whole, and whole you don't even realize in those scenarios you can be tr you're triggering it too. You're triggering you know, like it they're before like, it even oh, the, the storm's yeah. coming. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah, you got so, all uh, these cues set up. You get yeah. the thunder jacket, the pills, all that stuff. Yeah. All those are cues that something crazy is about to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, they've been conditioned at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you got to reverse that. You got to. And how many people? How many of you experience anxiety too when the thunderstorm's going on mm -hmm. and it's like? Oh my gosh, we're 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 just in this together, right? Yeah. We want to be a calm, confident, relaxed pack leader to help them to overcome this, right? Yeah. So good stuff. All right. So uh, before we can treat insecurity, first we have to be able to recognize what it looks like. All right. So remember, dogs communicate through body language, right? So we should always be mindful of our dog's body language so we can better understand the world through their minds. Okay. So for the sake of this conversation, dominance and confidence are related to each other and submission and insecurity are related to each other, all right? So there's some specific aspects of body language that we pay attention to um, that can communicate insecurity, right? Some are subtle, some are obvious. So keep in mind as well, as we go through these examples, these are generalities, right? So th this, these aren't like, okay, just because you see a tail positioning and this means they're insecure or they're fearful or whatever. These are generalities and context plays a huge factor depends on what environment we're in, what all is going on, what their previous learned behaviors and things like that. So uh, we're gonna give you some body language stuff, but just keep in mind, these are all generalities, all right? So the first thing we'll look at is tail positioning, okay? So this one's relatively easy to kind of to kind of observe and notice. So in general, the higher the tail position is, the more confident the dog is. The lower the tail is, uh, the more insecure the dog is, right? So you might see a dog that has their tail tucked in between their legs up against their stomach, right? That, that typically means they're experiencing high levels of insecurity at that moment. Maybe it's just lowered and pointing straight towards the ground, right? Still pretty feeling insecure, right? Obviously the tail typically when it's straight up, they're feeling very confident, right? So in general, that's what your tail positioning is gonna mean. Um, so while we're on the tails, let's talk about a wagging tail. So I think we've probably talked about this on, uh, you know, in, in previous episodes, but just because our dog is wagging their tail does not mean that they are happy, right? One more time. <laughs> <laughs> just because our dog is wagging their tail does not mean that they are happy, right? So um, typically, you know, tail wagging is some form of arousal, okay? So like, my dog's issues, he liked to go after dogs. And I say liked to, like that was his thing, you know what I'm saying? So he can have arousal in that state of mind when he's, but, but really all this stuff is what we're talking about, it's insecurity, it's, it's rooted in insecurity, but there's a dog, he knows that he's anticipating a dog fight, uh, he is aroused, right? So I would see his tail wag right before he would, he would uh, attack, you know what I'm saying? So yes, it can mean friendliness, it can be playfulness, but it can be anxiety, insecurity, submission, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. Let's touch on that just a little bit deeper in general, a little bit of deep dive on the, on the wagging tail yeah. in general. You know, again, we're talking about generalities. It's going to change with every context, every dog, you know, every situation. But in general, if the dog's tail is up or curled, slightly curled at the top, you know, and wagging in an upward position, that's arousal. Mm -hmm. That means I'm probably ready to go get something, get after it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> If my tail is horizontal to the ground, you know, horizontal, uh, you know, parallel to the ground, wagging back and forth in a slower wag, that's generally, you know, a neutral or a friendly or a happy type of wag. In general, if it's a friendly or happy wag, there's also going to be some rear end wagging, not just the tail, but the whole, you know, how they get the hips going. Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah. They get Especially all if we're talking about them boxers. You oh, know yeah. <laughs> You know, so that's a, a sign of usually friendliness, happiness. Then a low wag, you know, where the tail is lowered, pointing towards the ground like you talked about, and either the tip's just wagging or the tail's wagging lowered. That's, that's the nervousness, you know. About dog's nervous. Yep. <laughs> dog's a little bit insecure, you know, not sure what's going to happen. So a little bit of uh, submissive behavior there, you know what I'm saying? But that's a general, general thing to keep in mind yeah. with wagging tails, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So if a dog's got his tail up and wagging, you know, and your dog's running over there, you probably want to recall your dog back to you because that might end up in a fight that or dog's something ready like to get that. Some. 
Right, exactly. Even an even a insecure dog that's cornered and your dog's running over there, let's say you go over to a friend's house, they have a dog that's in the corner or up against a wall or up against furniture, their tail's a low wag, you probably want to recall your dog away from that too. Or kid, right? You or kid, I mean? yep. Yeah, you want to recall them away from, recall your kid away from that, you know. That's saying? a little harder. That's harder to get, you know. <laughs> but recall them away because that insecure dog, now they're feeling cornered, yeah. so they're in that fight or flight. If they can't flight, they're probably gonna fight. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Force so. a bad situation. Yeah. Yep. For sure. So, anyway. Good. Good. No. Good. Good, good, good go. point for sure. All right. So moving on. Next, we're gonna look at our uh, ear positioning. So this is pretty similar to the tail positioning in that the ears, generally being straight up, is going to uh, communicate confidence. Whereas the ears lowered or pinned all the way back, that's gonna be more related to your submission or insecurity. Okay. Head positioning is another one that we look at. So a dog carrying their head upright. So, you know, like chest is bowed out almost, their, their back straight, head, head is up. That's more of a confident, obviously like a head lowered down, um, kind of a coward position almost. Um, cowering, not like a coward, but I yeah, guess a coward. Yeah, the dog's a coward. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's coward down. The head is coward down. Um, that's, that's more of insecurity, right? Um, <clears throat> head positions relate to humans too, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, studying this dog body language, you start to observe people around you. Sure. You know what I'm saying? If you go up to interact with somebody and they got their head lowered, mm -hmm. they might be nervous about the interaction. So you want to, you know, posture yourself in a more friendly way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to be friendly. Well, but you know, Kevin, he's got yeah. chest out, shoulders back, head up all the time. I called, he used to get called cocky. It's like because I'm walking with my head up, you know? Kevin's okay, like, why aren't you looking at me? You know? Stare at the ground. Poor when guys just me. staring at the ground, straight down, <laughs> cowering in a corner. Oh my goodness. Good to go. All right. So uh, back positioning, uh, if a dog has their back, so we kind of talked about that already, but back is straight, right? With the chest bowed out, head up, that's confident. And then you'll see with uh, insecurity, a back will be kind of bent or lowered. Um, that's going to be more, more insecurity. Uh, and then hackles is another one that you might see, and that's, that's very contextual, so you have to be careful with that one. But the hackles, the hair on the back of our dogs, um, that could be like surprise or something like that. But um, depending on the context, that's, that's going to also be showing some signs of insecurity as well. I mean, like you already talked about, these are generalities, so you gotta like be able to understand how to combo these different yeah. body languages together because we've dealt with, I mean, you guys know, we've dealt with dogs that are really, they're insecure, mm -hmm. but they're displaying the dominant body language, sure. confident body language, their hackles are up, they're rah, 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 you know, barking, all that kind of stuff. But really deep down, once you peel those onion layers away in the dog's mind, you can tell, oh, this dog's right. really insecure. Yeah. So that's what we got to address first mm -hmm. before we can do blah, 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 exactly. you know, that it needs training wise, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so that's why, that's why the context matters, right? Because you see that you meet that dog for the first time. Well, when we do most of the time, where are they? They're in their yeah. house, right? As soon as we get them on a leash, we take them into a neutral environment. Then you really start to see these signs of insecurity. They're less, uh, you know, getting aggressive or anything like that. Yeah. Did you just have somebody join us over here? Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <clears throat> no. All right. So, uh, now that we understand what insecure body language looks like, we're going to talk about some other signs uh, that our dogs may have insecurity. This, these are things that we can take note of in day-to-day -day life. All right? So how your dog acts in the home and around you can say a lot about their personality. So these are things that we encourage you to kind of start to pay attention to, right? When things are nice and chill and relaxed, right? Take, take note of where, where does your dog lay down when, when they have free time or whatever, right? They're just hanging out. Uh, what are they, where, where are they laying down? So sometimes you'll see like with a confident dog, they, they really have no preference. Um, you know, they'll just lay out in the open, out in the middle of the floor, or, or uh, they'll even go lay off by themselves and don't care whether you're there or not, All right? Um, they might be in the same room as you, they might not, might not, but they typically don't have a preference as to where they lay, um, and they'll, or they'll just, like I said, be out in the open. So if your dog has some levels of insecurity, you might see that your dog prefers to lay up against something, up against a wall or the corner of a wall or up against uh, some furniture or up against you while you're sitting on the couch, right? Uh, you might see them want to lay underneath a coffee table or a chair, right? Uh, when, when a thunderstorm comes, you know, what, what, is their, what is their behavior? Are they like, oh, whatever, or hey, that's a loud noise, you know, and they just look up and then go back to sleeping or whatever? Or do they try to jump into the bathtub, right? Um, these, that, that would obviously be the sign of insecurity, right? Run into the closet. Run into the closet. Shaking. Yep. Shaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that. You know? Mm hmm Or, uh, or how, how many of you have a, a, a separate closet, a kind of a 
area set up for your dog for one of those scenarios. <laughs> yeah. I know I used to, right? Oh, yeah. I know a lot of people that we just, Maximus and Trevor, you know, they used to have little things set up for them, you know, not anymore. Even like a covered kennel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, not anymore. They got to get those dogs out in the open, yeah. help yeah. them to overcome that stuff. I mean, they'll be uncomfortable at first, but, you know, exposure mm. is yeah. ultimately going to, exactly. you know, a little desensitization there. So some other, some other things that you can pay attention to when you have people come over, maybe strangers or even family members, how, how does your dog interact or do they interact with, with those people, right? Confident dog may, again, show no care and be like, oh, hey, what's up? People are here. Um, you know, they may just happily walk up and greet them, right? An insecure dog may start barking or lunging at them or running away into another room or going into their kennel or whatever, their, their, whatever their safe place is, right? And then they're gonna be displaying some of this body language that we've already talked about, right? You may see with an insecure dog that they do approach a stranger, right? So that not all of them are gonna be aggressive. It's a, this doesn't mean that they're you know, aggressive, but they, they still may approach, but you're gonna st still see some of these signs like that low tail wag, you know, heads lowered, uh, ears are back, that kind of stuff. And then the people that are walking in, oh, hey, sweet boy, hey, yeah. sweet girl, and it yeah. freaks them out, yep. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bad interaction for the dog. It's better for your friends that are coming over. If you can tell your dog's insecure, act like the dog's not even there. Yep, exactly. You know? Yep, all about the, in, the energy you're, you're presenting as well, too. You know, that's going to be a factor. I get that so much in the consultations, you know. Yeah. You walk in, the dog runs up, rah, rah, and then just stops. Yeah. They're like, he's usually a lot more crazy. It's yeah. just the vibe you right. put off. You exactly, know? absolutely. You got to be controlled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So insecure dog might be clingy to you, right? Might be following you around the house as you go from room to room. Uh, you, might not, you might not see them relax until you relax, right? Um, if you're like me, you never relax. You know what I'm saying? You don't I, relax? I never, never relax. Uh, that's not what I've heard. Not even during noodle time? Uh, I relax a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to explain what noodle time is. Uh, it's when you, you know, free your back. You lay on the pool noodle. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> yeah, it could be a little, you know, suggestive. All right. <laughs> Back to insecurity, boys. Right. Kevin brought up the noodles. <laughs> we all have the same chiropractor, if anybody's wondering. Yeah. Dr. He's Anthony, been on the podcast. listen to the podcast. Good podcast. stuff. Next time he comes, we do need to have him talk about the noodle. Maybe we could do a podcast while we're all noodling. Ooh, that'd be a good one. You make that happen? I'd probably fall asleep. Ben's, Ben's, getting, Ben's getting ticked over here. <laughs> He's saying the state of the spirit. He's saying to keep staying, stay focused. Sorry. All right. All right. So those are just some examples. We talked about like the body language and then some of the signs, like the things that your dog might do day in and day out. You don't even pay attention to. I know I didn't before I got in, into this stuff. I'm like, oh, wow. He is. You know, my dog is insecure. So... Um, Dogs can have various level of insecurity depending on their personal experiences and personal situations. So uh, in many dogs, insecurity can lead to some serious problems. So most of the time, most of the aggression cases that we work that come to us for rehabilitation are, are rooted in insecurity, right? Uh, this can be caused by dogs continually being put in an uncomfortable positions and they resort to aggression to escape the situation, which undoubtedly becomes a successful strategy for them, right? Um, this could be, uh, we see this all the time at like dog parks, right? They're, they're in a, you're, you're, you're just throwing them in the, in the pit, right? And there's all these dogs in here swarming them. They're in an uncomfortable situation. You are not going to, uh, you're not there to stop that situation. So they have to take matters into their own hand. They become aggressive. The dogs back off. It works. And now we got a problem. It's like the right? Spartan fighting pits, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, another uh, good example would be like, what you just talked about earlier with people coming over to your house, mm -hmm. maybe you get a new dog. Mm -hmm. People come over, your dog's displaying signs of insecurity. Maybe you don't pick up on it, or maybe you're like, yeah, he's fine. People always greeting your dog, bombarding your dog. Then eventually your dog gets tired of it. Yep. Now people coming over, your dog starts reacting, yep. starts becoming aggressive or performing aggressive behavior because yep. it doesn't, those situations make it uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't want to be uncomfortable anymore. And it knows that displaying aggression gets it out of that, you yeah. know? So it works, right? Escalation. They bite, they go, whoa, and they leave the dog alone. And they're like, cool, that's all I wanted. Right, right. right. Another escalation of force there. Right. Yeah. And later on, you know, if you're recognizing, if you, you know, as we're, as we're speaking, if you're starting to recognize, like, oh, my dog does this, my dog does this. Like, well, he's just barking now. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to grow. Yeah. It takes right. time, but it is going to grow. It I gets to the more. point of a bite, and what does everybody say? It just came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah. There was no yeah. sign of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. probably yeah. there's been months, weeks, years of yeah. signs yeah. going on that, that led up to this, for sure. So, um, so 
that's a little bit on kind of like the aggression stuff. The, so some dogs are very, uh, they have a very low likelihood of resorting to aggression. So these dogs can rely on their flight response. And some dogs are like all day, like, hey, I got to get out of the situation no matter what. If I got to bust out of a kennel, bust through a window, right? So we consider these dogs are flight risk. So obviously that present, presents its own kind of problem. Uh, this is why, you know, you see so many dogs end up in the shelters and go missing on uh, 4th of July, New Year's. You know, they get scared, they flee, and they take off under, you know, even from their own home, which is their safe place. They're so terrified, they just, boom, they're out of there, right? Fireworks going off, family's not home because the family's at the 4th of July party. Left them in the backyard. Busts out of the kennel, or leaves them in the backyard, yeah. Yeah. Dog busts out of the kennel, busts out the window, takes off down the street. Fireworks are still going off, so it just pushes it further and further and further and further until it's either exhausted and it can't go anymore, or where there's no fireworks, and that's... And then it comes back to its mindset, mm-hmm. you know, because when it's in that flight response, it's in a crazy mindset. It's you know? tunnel vision. And once it gets Survival out of that, mode. it's like, holy yeah. cow, where am I? Yep. You know exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, most, so most incidents where we have kids getting bit, mm-hmm. I think we kind of touched mm-hmm. on that, but that is, that's most of the time that's insecurity, you know, and I and, uh, hate to say it, but most of the time it's, well, I'm not going to say it's the kid's fault. It's probably the parent's Parent fault, fault for not watching. Um, not helping the dog and right. not having the structure and not, uh, <laughs> not paying things. attention. That's you know right. What I'm saying? That's right. So, yep. but again, not your fault because you don't, you don't see these things, right? So you don't, under, you don't necessarily understand what's going on. But if you're listening to this episode after this and something like this happens, then it is your fault. Right? It is your fault. So, it's your fault. Um, it's, it's your fault. fault. <laughs> but kids have all this crazy energy most of the time, right? You know, kids, head, yep. Kids don't ears. know. They don't know boundaries, even with people. You know, I've had strangers' kids come up and like touch me in the eyeball, stick their finger in my nose and what? stuff. Yeah, that doesn't happen to you. No. Yeah, <laughs> random people. So kids don't know boundaries, right? Too so friendly. Too friendly. <laughs> <laughs> kids don't understand boundaries. They don't. They don't know what the rules are, um, especially super young kids. Um, I know my, my almost two-year-old, he's, he's now at that phase where he wants to pull the dog's hair, right? That's my job to stop that. Uh, not, I'm not going to put my dog in a situation where she's got to correct that kind of stuff, right? So uh, He likes to pull your beard, too. He does. That's where, he gets, that's where it started. That's where it started. Yeah, he definitely he does get bit for that, but it's justified. Uh, so anyway, so those are just some of the problems. So you guys can see why insecurity is not healthy and, beca- and can become a real problem for you and your dog, right? So uh, many dogs get labeled as aggressive and are put down, unfortunately, when, when in fact they're not, a, they're not really aggressive. We wouldn't classify them as aggressive dogs. Sure, they're resorting to aggression, but they're, they're scared, right? They're just, they're just scared and need some help. And, uh, you know, we, we keep, people keep putting them down, right? I mean, the majority of aggression of dogs that are displaying aggression or that are aggressive like we already talked about, if you peel back the onion yep. enough, what's really down in there is insecurity. Right. You know what I'm saying? There are a couple of those, you know, highly dominant dogs. Right. A couple of those dogs are just straight up aggressive and you deal with that a little bit differently, you know. But majority case, mm-hmm. you peel that onion layer away, yeah. which takes time, yep. you know, it takes a process, but you peel it away, boom, there it is right in front of you. Mm-hmm. Insecurity. Yep. Which, and it really, I mean, really, when you think about it, it makes sense. Like a yeah. confident dog has no reason to put on these displays because they're not feeling the things that, right. that mm-hmm. these dogs are feeling. They're right. reactive. They're forced to react. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so insecurity, bottom line, insecurity needs to be dealt with so it doesn't get to this point. Right. So we have a responsibility as dog owners to understand insecurity and take the proper means to address deal it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Get some. You gotta get after it. <laughs> Bring it down. Bring gotta, it down. Gotta peel the onion back. <laughs> Scott is like, get keep, after it. I keep boys. thinking about Shrek every time he yeah. says that. Yeah. What? Shrek. Yeah. Oh, Shrek, good movie. Shrek. <laughs> yeah. There's oh, an okay. onion part in there. Yeah. I'm an ogre. Not an ogre. Yeah. That, don- that donkey has some insecurity. He does have some insecurity. Oh, yeah. 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 That's There's my a lot way. of people that have insecurity. That's my yeah, way. that's true, too. That was my way of trying to bring us It kind of works the same with, uh, with people, though. You know, yeah, You got the guy who's like, what are you going to yeah. do? A little insecure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Peel the onion. Peel his onion back. Get after it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. So now that we know how to recognize it, we're never going to get through this. <laughs> so we, know, we, we talked about how to recognize insecurity. So now we can talk about how to address it, right? So uh, the first step in addressing insecurity is knowing and understanding what is causing the fear response, right? Um, for dogs, it's 
the presence of other dogs, or maybe sometimes it's a thunderstorm. It can be strangers coming over to the house. It can be something simple like a vacuum cleaner, ah, right? The vacuum. Yeah, the vacuum. Surprised Wally with the vacuum yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it can even be, I mean, Kevin trained a dog that was afraid of inanimate objects. You know, like <laughs> yeah. just a water bottle. Stay, oh it's too God. still, right? And whoo, should be afraid. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the reflections. Yep. Knew that, that one. Was, that was yeah. a big one. Yeah. But, but, but that brings up a good point. Like, you you look at certain things and you're like that shouldn't be scary. Right. You're like you, you just get over it, right? We we have to look at it from their perspective. Like things, what from their perspective, what is traumatizing? What is fear? You know, maybe this water bottle just sitting here is fearful to that dog. Menacingly, yeah. But you don't know, like you don't know. like you talk about, you don't know what happened that dog's past. Yeah. So all we can do, <laughs> Ben's telling me to be quiet. All we can do, he's telling me to bring it, bring down the volume <laughs> level. <laughs> I was getting a little amped up right there. <laughs> anyway, you know, like we don't know what happened in the dog's yeah. past, mm -hmm. but we have the dog with us at the here and now. We got to move forward, That's you right. know, so we don't focus on the past. That's you know, right. we don't focus on the history. Let's let's get after it. Absolutely. Let's deal with it. Let's, deal with let's peel back the onion. Let's get it. Set a water bottle by our kennel every night. Yeah. Feed her next to it. Good yeah. to go. Feed her out of the water bottle. <laughs> right. So, yes. So... We're gonna do something called desensitization, okay? So this is, uh, this is what we do in our training programs, right? So we have to introduce whatever it is that is causing the fear response and then provide our dogs with a positive experience. In short, that's what you gotta do, all right? So the key sounds here- easy. Sounds easy. Sounds like a sounds piece of really cake. Sounds really easy. Sounds like a piece of cake, right? It sounds really easy. <laughs> yeah. So just, you got a thunderstorm, make it positive. That's it. All right, that's it. End of that episode. Does. See you guys later. It's <laughs> super easy. <laughs> It's just like the easy button. That, that was, was easy. easy. They, should have, they should have an app. They probably have one. Easy button app. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. That was easy. But it's not that easy, right? It's not, not necessarily easy. that easy, right? So the key here is introducing the fearful thing at a level that's not overwhelming to our dog, right? Mm -hmm. So if the stimulus is other dogs, that's what, that's what causes all the insecure behaviors with our dog, right? So maybe we go to the dog park and we stay very, very far away. We're like 100 yards away, right? And so like barely to the point where our dogs even notice the other dogs, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and we, we do engagement. We've talked about engagement before, so we won't go into detail on that, but we're, we're playing with our dog, having a, playing a, having a good fun game interaction between our dog and us um, while those dogs are way off in the distance, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the other common one we talked about was strangers coming over to the house, right? So in this scenario, oftentimes the trigger is the doorbell. The doorbell starts the whole process, right? So, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the sound effects. So as this begins the stressful situation of a stranger coming over, right? So maybe we want to ring the doorbell ourselves and try to perform engagement, right? So no, no actual person's coming over. We are ringing the doorbell. That's where you would do the ding dong. Ding dong. We, we need a board, I guess. Uh, yeah. That's where you, you would you would ring the doorbell yourself. Nobody's over here. Maybe they get a little bit worked up. You regain focus, play some engagement. Right? We're desensitizing that doorbell. Or if you have a uh, significant other, every time they come home from work, tell them, "Hey, ring the ding dong." Ring, ring the, the ding, ding, ding dong. dong. Yeah. Ding the dong. Ring the ding dong. <laughs> every time you come home from work. And as soon as you do that, I'm gonna play with uh, play with my dog. Got <laughs> yeah. bet on that one. Ben lost it. <laughs> All right, keep it going. Keep it going. All right, so you can even take this a step further. Let's say the doorbell's too much. Let's say Ooh. you ring the ding dong and it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much like you cannot you can't get their focus you can't play engagement with them they're they're just losing it so you might have to tone it down a little bit maybe we're gonna play uh, a YouTube recording mm -hmm. of a, a doorbell right a little soft in the background uh, same like thunderstorms right maybe that's like if you're if you've had years of, of thunderstorms going on and your dog's like I'm, I just want to go in the tub they're probably not gonna take food they're probably not gonna engage with you right. so maybe we need to introduce the sound of a thunderstorm at a low level through some computer speakers or whatever just put on a loop 24 so it works I mean we don't want to <laughs> make it worse <laughs> keep bringing up but, the bathtub thing is that what your dog's used yeah, to yeah yeah up in the yeah yeah I can relate to that one literally did yeah. you just take off down the yeah. hallway and I just hear boom yeah boom <laughs> just oh, dies I mean right that's common it. that's a <laughs> common one is the bathtub that thing is like she just figured out where it was like the first day when she started losing it just yeah. plowed through the yeah. door and yeah <laughs> this looks good to me i'll set up camp here all right 
So the key, the key to desensitization is finding what level of stimulus you are still able to provide your dog with a positive experience, i.e. food rewards, uh, toy rewards, whatever you're gonna use, and then building the level of the stimulus until it no longer elicits a fear response, right? So this is, this is a process that you can, realistically, you can start this without uh, any training at all. Yeah. Right, so no. you can do this. It's as easy. Yeah. So, but you do um, need training. But so. you do need. You still need to. We're, we're getting there, Kevin. We're getting there. Come, <laughs> Eight, four, three, three, two, one, three. <laughs> you guys got anything on on uh, desensitization? You just start off at a distance, like you already talked about. Whatever that trigger is, you start off at a distance or a threshold away from that trigger where there's no response, and you just slowly work your way in, mm -hmm. keeping it as fun and positive as possible. Now, let's say. You know, going back to the dog scenario, you start 100 yards away from the dogs, maybe you get to 50 yards, and this doesn't happen in one day or two days, right. it's multiple sessions. But let's say you get to the 50 yard mark and your dog starts to react, what do you have to do? Back it up, back out to 60 yards, slowly work your way back down, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Perfect. So, that, so that's desensitization, and uh, the thing with that is typically it's, it's exclusive to one thing, right? Like that doorbell. So now we have another event of thunderstorms. We gotta desensitize that, right? Now we have people coming over. We gotta desensitize that, whatever. So uh, you, it, that can be time consuming to, to pick every little thing that your dog doesn't like and do desensitization. You should, right? But there's some other things that can help speed up this process, and that is having a good system of training at Canine Revolution Dog Training, mm, right? There it is. So, <laughs> see, I said wait for it. <laughs> so, obviously, like, uh, uh, desensitization is great, engagement is great, um, but we recommend training, you know, a little bit further than that for all dogs, whether you're even dealing with insecurity or whatever. Mm. Um, but training is very, very important when we're talking about addressing high levels of insecurity or any insecurity. You right? need some structure. You need some yeah. structure. You need some routine. You need some routine. You need, you need to be some... able to redirect out of that mindset. Mm -hmm. You need some rituals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rituals. Mm -hmm. For sure. So. You need some pack mentality. <laughs> <laughs> First step is structure, mm. right? Oh. So, interesting. Really? Dude, it's like, do you know this stuff? I guess. Oh, interesting. Dang. Dang. That's good. So uh, we, we have done a, uh, an episode, a previous episode on structure. Um, and then I think also on the potty training episode, we talk a lot about structure as well. So check that stuff out as far as the details on that. But introducing structure decreases our dog's level of insecurity simply because it puts us in control of their environment. When we are in control, um, they can learn to rely and trust us, right? Because we can avoid putting them in situations where... Uh, they are going to be caused insecurity, right? Maybe not always, but uh, as much as possible, right? This is this is the uh, the the starting point, right? So we can control the environment, prevent them from from uh, being in some scenarios where they're fear fearful. <laughs> I can't I can't what? talk. <laughs> what is wrong? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> when we control the environment, we can prevent putting them in scenarios where they are fearful until we can completely desensitize all the other things we're dealing with, right? Structure. Did you say feetful the first time? Did I? I don't know. Possibly. You think about feet? Possibly. You just had a moment where it just My like feet cracked. Are, yeah. I Kelly know. massaged your feet last night? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was sleeping. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> you guys see what I got to work with here? <laughs> I see it. <laughs> the other aspect of the training that is crucial is teaching obedience, all right? So uh, obedience is, is part of teaching our dog a set of rules and expectations to live by, right? And so when we're talking about obedience, the way that we do obedience uh, when we're addressing these kinds of behaviors, uh, you have to train this to a very high standard, a very high level, advanced, mm -hmm. okay? So Precision. Precision, right? Precise. So while I'm not knocking going to a pet store, and getting some kind of puppy class or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my dog sat a couple times, right? Could be, a, pre -K. Could could be a, a decent right. foundation. It's a good starting point, right? right? Exactly. But I mean, you could have, have some bad experiences. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, pre -K sure. All right, we're, we're knocking that. We yeah. are knocking that officially. Yeah. Did you see those? They're crazy, yeah. man. You want dogs. a PhD? You come, to, you come to the revolution. All the dogs are just going ham. The instructor's like sitting in a circle, just like, all right, yeah, give them a sit. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, we're not talking about the occasional our dog sat for us and we gave him a treat. I'm talking. Every time we say sit, or we say down, or we say come, or we say stay, our dog does it, right? This is the level that we are, we are striving to train our obedience to, and this is, this is important. When we give them a command, they must follow it, right? And this isn't us being control freaks, 
This is from a safety perspective. They have to listen to us, right? Some, we are, again, this goes back to we're in control of the environment. Okay, if we're, at, if we're outside at a busy park and there's cars driving all over the place and things like that and they can't hold a stay, uh, that's going to be a potential issue, right? And especially if they have that flight response that we talked about, their flight risks, and they want to just take off and now we got issues. Not only that, but you know, if they, if they understand that, they know you're going to control the scenario, situation, right. environment for them. Yeah. Therefore, you're also eliminating the insecurity. Right. Yep. Yep. Getting rid of the onion. That's right. Getting rid of the, all the onion layers. Oh my gosh. You tell your dog to sit, they don't sit, and you're just like, whatever. Well, yeah. <laughs> then later on in these situations, they're not going to you know, people are like, you know, sit, they don't sit, they're like, good boy. <laughs> give, yeah. give them you're a the, treat anyway. Give a treat anyway. You're such a good, cutie. Good deviation. Yeah. Yeah, let me yeah. reinforce that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so once, once you've trained to that level, all right, and if you need help with that, caninerevolutiondogtraining.com, all right? Mm. Is that our website? Okay. Um, hit us up. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Boom. Once, once you're trained to that level, then you can really start to make some progress on dealing with, with insecurity. So employing our dog is a way to give them a job. You give them something to do, right? So when we do this during times of insecurity, this gives them something to focus on, right? So then we can make sure that we do our part as the pack leader to not allow a negative experience to occur. So uh, we keep going back to the thunderstorm example, right? So big one. once a thunderstorm... The big onion layer. That's a, that's a, we also keep going back to this onion that came out of nowhere. This is not in the article, by the way. I, I said nothing about onions, so I don't know where... I'm going to make him like a little trophy thing. It's just yeah. going to be an onion. Yeah. So he's getting like Christmas. It. I like it. <laughs> that's a good idea, actually. Get Chris a little onion trophy. Why do I get that? <laughs> you the one that came up with the article for this okay. episode. Right. There's not a single onion mentioned no, no. in this article, I don't believe. I so, see a couple of bringing it back, bringing it back. Thunderstorm begins. Everything we've talked about, we, see, we start to see signs. You just typed onion in there. <laughs> you just typed onion in the article. <laughs> like I wasn't going to see that. <laughs> All right, so the thunderstorm begins, our dogs start to show signs of insecurity, right? They're pacing around the house, they're running into the bathtub, whatever, right? So at that moment, right, assuming we've done our obedience training, everything like that, we can send them to what we call the spot, right? Some people call it the place, whatever. It's a pet cot, a bed, a place that they go and, and remain in a down state. So now we're employing them during this uh, fearful time, right? So now they have something to focus on, and when the storm passes, they make it through, the fearful experience, unharmed, yeah. right? And alive, it didn't kill them. Oh my gosh, we made it through. Placement so, of that is extremely important as well. Yeah. So when I was working, because Lulu used to have, you know, be bad about thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. Thunderstorm started, spot, middle of my living room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna mm -hmm. sit out here in the open, we're gonna go through it together, we're yeah. gonna deal with it. You know, if you take food or I can, you know, distract sure. you, good. If not, yeah. we're gonna have to work through it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. can we can we employ them and they still reinforce yep. on, on insecurity? Sure, yeah, like what if, what if whatever our spot is or whatever, they're in a corner or they're underneath something or what, or or we go like, oh, well, we got them in the spot, so now I'm going to go coddle them. Oh, it's okay, buddy. Right? Yeah, Same right. back to what we've already talked yeah. about, right? So, yeah, that's that's a huge thing. Yeah, if your dog's on spot but, like, they're shaking because they're insecure about the thunderstorm, let them ride it out. Yeah. You yeah. don't need to touch exactly. them. You don't need to talk to them. Yeah. You know, yep. just let them, let them and this, mentally go through it yeah you know? and it takes it takes time right so like this isn't you're, you don't expect to do this one time a thunderstorm happens you hold them to a spot now they're good to go for the next thunderstorm no it's going to take time yeah. but eventually as they learn to rely on this on the obedience command rely on you as the pack leader they get through this thing unharmed they're slowly building their confidence right and this is this goes for any any scenario we've talked about or any scenario you're dealing with I mean, a lot of times the insecure dogs when they find something that's comfortable to them like the spot Anytime they're uncomfortable, they just go there and yeah. lay there on yeah. their own. Say so you've got them free roaming, yeah. you know, in the house, you're at work, no one's there, you know, and they feel insecure. Now they can, they, they have a means to get right. comfort for themselves. They go to the spot, boom, I'm going to hold, hold my down stay. Yeah. Right. So yeah, good point for sure. Um, so this, doing this builds our dog's confidence over time, reduces the insecurity, right? So this is why a good system of training is crucial. Okay. So hopefully... Uh, I know this was probably a lot of information, but uh, hopefully this kind of gives you some insight into uh, insecurity, body language, things to look out for, what to do to address it. Um, you know, let us let us know if you guys have anything else that you guys want us to uh, address and talk about. Um, but that's all we got. We we appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time.